Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbabwe. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zim017 at the Zim site, zimjs.com. And let's see, the last little bit is an example. Let's see, how should we find this? If we go to Zim017, it's not in here, but it's down in the updates. And we're going to deal with the very last thing in the updates for this date is data to and from Node. Uh, using async, ajax, and bind. So we have an example in a zip. Uh, we probably could have put the example uh, node package manager itself as a package, but whatever. So if we go to the code module, so if you're on Zim and wanting to find this, you go to code and there's npm, which has how to get Zim uh, from node package manager, and there's all the helper libraries too that are there, and then templates for Svelte, React, Angular, Vue, etc. And then down here, we've added a little bit, uh, a zip file and the video. This will actually link to this very video. But uh, there's the zip file right there, sample node app with zim async ajax bind and data. So I'm going to press that and it downloaded a little thing there. So F11. There's my data.zip. Oh, it already zipped it. So yeah, it uh, gave me zip one. And here's what it looks like in data.zip. So if you open it or unzip it, you'll see express. And indeed, we do want to unzip it. So I'm going to hit extract all. And uh, then I will sure replace that, I guess. And here's what you get. So this is it unzipped. And there's an express folder. Inside the express folder is this other stuff here. But the easiest way to deal with all of this is just take the express folder take the express folder and drop it right onto your VS Code icon. So if you have a VS Code icon, or you can open that up in VS Code. So now all I have open in VS Code is my express. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it because then when you run your node stuff, it will uh, not have to worry about paths and stuff. So all I have open is express, and in here are the files that come with the zip. All right, great. Um, the main ones, let's see, note that there's no package, uh, no packages that come with that. So those don't usually get zipped or put in the package. You would have to install it. And this package.json will have mm, anything that needs to be installed, which is just express, it looks like, primarily. And if you wanted to use nodemon or nodemon, uh, then you got that too. Um, here is... Uh, the app.js, so we'll be looking through that. And also there's a public folder with an index.js, so we'll look at both the app and the index, double-clicking. All right, probably the index first, but to actually run it, you need to get node running. So I'm not sure if you've done much node, but uh, here's how you can do it. You can pull this thing up right here, right at the bottom. I've pulled up and that gets me a console that will help. And the first thing we'll do is npm install. You'll need to have Node installed, but that's not what we're talking about here. So um, we do do some intro videos to using Zim with Node and what Node Package Manager is and what Node is. So you can, if you don't, if you've never done Node before, you probably don't need to. <laughs> but if you're wanting to get into it, then uh, I'm not sure this is the very first best place, but maybe, who knows. Uh, anyway, if you want to get into it, then go see uh, that Node Package Manager site on the code section of Zim and look up um, the earlier videos where we actually introduce Node and talk more about it. This is assuming that you've already used Node and know in general how to do it. So I've just hit install there and that installed all of the, all these Node packages are really being used for Express. Express is a way that we can easily make apps. So yay. All right, that's been installed. And the next thing we want to do is run the app.js. And so that would be npm, or sorry, uh, node and space app like that. And that runs the app. If we use node daemon, like, or node mon, I guess node monitor. But if we use node monitor, there's another way to run it, but you can also see, you know, you don't even need that. So see, um, see the earlier videos 
if you want to know how to do that too. It just allows you to make changes here, save the changes, and it will automatically run the latest. Right now, if we want to stop and make some changes to our app, we would have to control C. Control C gets us out of, uh, out of that. And then we can make some changes and then we would have to run it again. I'm using my arrow up. To use an arrow up, it goes to the last command run and then hit enter. Anyway, this is now saying that we're running on port 3000. So to be able to view this, we would have to open up a browser to localhost, there it is right there, colon 3000. So localhost colon 3000 and hit enter. And this is that app running. Uh, if you wanted to get the general public to look at that node app, there's a lot more to it that we're not going to go into, but basically you would have to have it all running on a server somewhere. Anyway, we're localhost though as a server, and here's the example that we're showing async to and from server initial data. So we're actually passing the words initial data, and there are the words that we've received from async. So this is Zim that we've got running here, as, as you can see, it's a Zim file. And we're receiving data from the server that says that. And we're see, receiving that with async. And so I'll sh show you how to do that. Async is basically like Ajax, except it runs JSONP. It's a way to send JSON back and forth without the security issues that Ajax runs into. Usually you don't really care about that, but it can be handy and it uses a uh, get. So it's only for like small bits of data that you're wanting to get back and forth really easily. And you can do that with async. So Zim's got async. Uh, then we also have Ajax. So when I press Ajax, it says server says hello from button. Um, so that just went to the server this localhost server, or app.js, and return some information there. And then we've got bind. What bind does is it's remembering how many we have checked. So if I uncheck those two and hit refresh here, those two are still unchecked. So that is going to the server, finding out if those are checked or not. And bind will load the right values into start. And anytime we change those values, it will send it off to the server. We're not storing this in a database. Uh, bind can work with local storage, uh, but we're wanting to show you how to get data to and from the server. Local storage is in the server. Bind works with local storage, it's the easiest way, but it only remembers a single user. Um, we are binding this time to a flat file on our local host, which really only works for us anyway because we're local. But if this were all put on a server, that bind would be shared by people. So everybody going to this on a server would see this. And if they made a change like that, then somebody else loading it would see that change. It's not the same as sockets. We do have examples of uh, running sockets in Node.js. And in both in Node.js and not in Node.js, sockets are multi-user real-time communication. This is not bind, it's just binding to um, a database. Okay, so anyway, oh, we're not actually binding to a database in this example. We could, and there's a little uh, hint or two in the, the code that we can see coming up that shows us how we could go to MySQL or MongoDB or some other database. And it's quite easy to do as well, but I'm assuming that you already would know how to do that on the node side. If you're just wanting to hook Zim up to a database, uh, we, we have Zim bind and Zim bind works with PHP on a database. And that's a whole, or sorry, not Zim bind, um, Zim base. Zim base uh, makes PHP connection, MySQL, I, MySQL connections to a database much easier. But here we're um, not using PHP, so this is a different zip file that shows us how we could bind, in this case, to a flat file. But the database is very similar, and like I said, we're assuming you already know how to set up uh, Node.js in a database. If not, uh, perhaps some other day we can do an explore on that. Um, we've done that before. We don't do it too often because um, we don't really need to. <laughs> So there. Anyway, um, that's a little bit of an overview then. Why don't we take a look at the file that's uh, going on in behind here? So we've been sending some information to the console as we were doing all that stuff. So post request made, and here were the checks that were the, the data coming in. We have some initial data, uh, blah, 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 blah. 
And anyway, I'm going to control C this like that. And we're going to take a look at, how about we look at the index first. Uh, this is Zim, so it should look fairly familiar to you. Well, maybe not. We haven't used Zim before, but we're certainly not here to introduce Zim. So we're in uh, a Zim frame, although I suppose we could update that to 017 there. And here we have, we're making an icon and data to and from. So that's just the title stuff there. And some install stuff. So there's some of the things that we've just done, little instructions there and viewing it on 300. Okay, data. So we can use async, Ajax, and bind. Async can send via get. Ajax can either use get or post, and bind can either use get or post. Any of these can be used for any of the situations below. It's a matter of preference. And all we're doing here, this data doesn't really make sense, but we're showing round trips, uh, how to get from Zim to Node.js and back again using these things or examples of those. All right, so async. Um, this is Zim, so not our app. This is how we receive the data. So here we are going to send some data. Async, the command is initial data. And here's the callback. So this is um, what we're calling on the server. So slash async is going to be called. And you'll see how we collect that in the Ajax. It's called routing. We sort of say, oh, we have asyncs coming in. Therefore, I'm going to route to this uh, function. But that's on our app.js. And we're passing some initial data right in on post. So there we are. That's post, the command initial data. And we're going to receive that command and then the server is going to send it back again when we arrive. So when this arrives, we've actually sent some data to the server and that's us getting the initial data back right here in the Zim file. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't really need to. But when we do get that data back, we'll receive that data and we're going to make the label show the data's answer property right there. Uh, we're going to locate that and update the stage because that doesn't happen right away. It takes a little bit for it to come in. So we, we have an automatic when we, as a matter of fact, we might have been so quick it would work, but we've got a ready function when the function when the frame is ready. Then we call the async and get a callback. So by that time, our update stage.update might have already happened. So in this receiving data, we have to make sure that we update the stage. Here's Ajax, so we have a button called Ajax in the label. That's this purple button right there. And we're locating it, and when we tap on it, we're making a new Ajax, we're posting. So a new Ajax object, and we're posting to this URL. So that'll be via post rather than get. Otherwise, you could use get there. Um, so we're, or sorry, uh, yeah, you could use get. So we're uh, posting to that URL. And this is the data that we're telling it. And the callback is do button. And down here in do button, we get some data. We're making a label with that data and updating the stage again for the same reason. So if we refresh here and press Ajax. Oh, <laughs> OK. So that's what it looks like when we don't have the app running. So if you recall, we close the app. I suppose I didn't really need to close the app. And so I'm going to hit the arrow up and start the app again. So now the app is running. And when we refresh here, there's Ajax and we hit hello from button. Okay, so that came back from the server, those words. We sent those words to the server and then the server receives them in the app and the server sends them back, um, returns to our callback, do button and sends the data back again. Wow. All right, the last one is bind. And bind is there sort of to make sending data back and forth easier. It may look a little bit complicated right at the start, but it's shorter uh, than using um, Ajax or uh, JSONP in the async. So here we have, and that's just the label up on top says bind with blah 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 and then here's our checkboxes so 
we're basically making a checkbox each time, four checkboxes, and then we're tiling those four checkboxes, four of them, one, uh, four columns, one row, spacing H, spacing V, and using those unique ones rather than randomly picking from them, and then locating them. So that makes those checkboxes there. And when we, uh, we've created a bind called B, new bind, it will be calling bind on the app. So in the app, in the routing, we'll see that we collect via bind. We also collect Ajax and we collect JSONP, wherever that went, async. Okay, so those can be any, it just, they don't have to be async, async. That could have been do it, uh, run house, um, sync, oh, sync ship, you know, <laughs> whatever. And then on the server, we would have to find out, oh, you're calling sync ship. Okay, I'll do this. And also via post or get matters as well. So we're binding to that via post. And when we get data from the server, which actually happens right away, so we've made a new bind, and the very first thing it's going to do is say, hey, are we getting anything from the server? And that will allow us to see if this has already been made. So isn't that cool? Um, so if we already have data, then it, it's bound right here. So let's go to the next part anyway. Um, new checkbox dot bind. This is the name of it, a string name. So you have to have a string name for each thing that you bind. This is the property on the checkbox. So the checkbox has a checked property as a string again. Okay, because you can't just do this. You can't just put checked without a string uh, because that would look for a variable data called checked. So same thing here. So in other words, checkbox one, two, three, four, and in each case we're we're doing the checked property. Uh, okay, so we're binding to this string on the server, and well, the server will receive that, and the property that we want to bind is checked. So if we didn't have this changed here, or this change thing, we have just bound any data coming from the server. Uh, isn't that easy? Um, and basically the checkboxes will be checked depending on what the server is telling us. We also want to send to the server though. We're not only collecting data from the server, we want to send to the server the this data right here. So whenever we change the checkbox, so on that's basically an on change. You could have used an on change, but this is a chainable on changed. If we just put on change here and chained it onto this, C1 would be the ID of that on change so that we could turn the turn it off. So never, never um, uh, use a chaining with the on method. That's why we had to make a chainable change event, a method and a chainable tap method. Okay, so that we don't have to chain on um, these things. Okay, an on method. All right, but that's okay to chain a change, yay. And basically when we change, it's saying bind, send send data, that's all we need. If we wanted to, we could sp send this specific data, but it's not really worth it. It's gonna send all four of these data, but that's no big deal. Okay, um, and any one of these checkboxes changing does that. Like I said, we could have specifically said do probably the same thing in there or something like that. I don't know what it is for sure, but something like that. Okay, uh, probably just this data would go in here and the other data would go in there, but it doesn't matter. Isn't that cool? So believe it or not, that is, that's going, we're getting data from the server and sending data to the server with just a dot from and a dot to attached to whatever else we already had and, and needed. Oh. And we the original bind there as well. Okay, super. So that's on the Zim side. Yay. Okay, what about on the app side? So presumably you know Zim pretty well and maybe don't quite know as much about Node.js. But on the other hand, so this is for uh, Zim people to kind of see what Node.js is like. Like I said, it's not a beginning tutorial on Node.js. 
So I'm going to have to assume that you've maybe watched some of those earlier ones where we talk about Node from the beginning. And even those you know, aren't necessarily the best place to learn JS or Node.js, but maybe they are. I mean, I've tried maybe four or five times, five or six times in my life over the last 10, 20 years to learn Node.js. And in those beginnings, it was hell. It was just almost impossible for me to figure out what the heck they were trying to talk about and conceptually and all this kind of stuff. Zim has a history of making hell a nice place to live. <laughs> so um, maybe you will uh, be able to learn Node from what we were telling you. Certainly we whittled it down a little bit and showed you the process. There's still like magic that goes on the command line, but we have taken away uh, you know, a hundred pages that you would normally get if you go onto the internet and try and figure out what you're doing in Node. So um, hopefully that makes it easier. I don't know, maybe. Okay, anyway, coming in, uh, we're using strict, we're requiring a file system. So this is using require, you can use import now these days as well. Maybe we should have just used import throughout. But anyway, require uh, the file system, that comes with Node so you don't have to um, use it here in our package. Where's our package? So node comes with a package that says, hey, what what modules are we going to be using? We're really only bringing an express. Don't, don't worry about that one. We're only really bringing an express. Oh, I see that I do have the start. So if we went npm start, it would have activated our whole thing with node mod. I thought I maybe didn't put that in there, but that's already set up for you. So that's pretty easy. You want to see that? I'll just uh, escape out of this, Control-C, Control-C. There we go, so it's not running anymore. And if I go npm start, like that, which is in our script, start, it's gonna run Nodemon and then our app.js. So hit enter there, and you can see that it says it's running on 3000. And what that means is we can make a change to the app or the index and save it, and this will stop and start it again. Um, so let's try test. <laughs> okay, and so it restarted due to changes. Do you see that? And it's actually saying, oops, <laughs> test is not, not proper there. And we save it again, save, and hopefully it'll run. There it is, so we're up and running again. Okay, cool, huh? Um, that if you're actually working in this, that saves you a lot of time and bother. All right, so uh, there we are bringing an express and we had to import that uh, or include that in our package.json. And we're saying app is express. So this is how express usually starts. Express is going to help us. Okay, what else do we have here? We're setting a port to 3000. That's why we're listening on 3000. We and Express is helping us do that. You can do this in raw node as well. And I can't remember if we went through some videos in raw node. I'm not sure. Probably, I think, maybe. Anyway, um, Express just helps you do this stuff a little bit. Uh, we're also telling it that our static pages are going to be in the public directory. So here's the public directory. And that's what's actually making the index load when we go to 3000. It just says, oh, you know, I, I don't have any routing for an index, and therefore uh, I'm going to check the public directory, and there's an index page in the public directory. All right. There's some information here that, hey, we're, uh, we're just doing simple examples. Um, it doesn't make too much sense, but hopefully it's sim as simple as we can get to show, us, to show you guys data going back and forth. And you can use this system that we've got here. This is a very simple app, but you can install what is called middleware. And that might thing be things like, hey, let's get a joke or load the weather or stock values and stuff. And all of that stuff works pretty well like what we're doing here. You would just use it and pass information to and from it sort of thing. So like I said, maybe we'll do a, an app where we put a joke in Zim from a node package and go through that whole system. But that's not here. Here we're just talking about data. We're not really talking about how to make apps. 
So you can do this thing called use in Express, and this is a request and this is a response, not a result. So it's not a request and a result, it's a request and here's how to send the response. So that's a big difference, it's the opposite. So the request is um, what was sent to the server and this is the or this is what was sent to the server. We're in the server. So this is what was coming in to us here. And this is our response. This is what we're sending back to Zim. Uh, so, and there's this thing called next. So when you use, you're responsible for calling next. Otherwise, this whole chain of stuff will stop running. Okay. Anyway, we're just showing whatever the URL that's coming in, whatever method and URL on that request. So what method came in? and what URL was used. Okay, and we're console.logging it. That means that when we refresh here, refresh, um, it is console.logging here to the terminal, not to the console in, uh, come on, not to the console here, so F12, not this console, uh, not that console at all, this console, nothing in this console, okay? So the console.logs here are showing up in the terminal below. All right, path. Um, here's how you can do routing. So you can use this path right here, and anytime we hit test, it will say starting test. So for instance, if I come back to 3000, and I go test there, and hit enter, it says test here, but also down in the console, it says starting with test um, right there. That's what it says in the console. Here's what we sent on the result. So, or sorry, on the response. So not a result, on the response. So this is us sending back a response and we're sending a big H1 test right there. So that's why we see that as opposed to this, which is our index page. And end it, don't go any further. Okay, good. So those were just some basic uh, Express stuff and also very similar to basic Node.js without even using Express. Get and post, but usually we're sending get and post information and so they can be routed uh, via get here. So that's an example or post here like that. And we receive our data a little bit differently. So here we are getting, so this is get, and when we set that async, remember back in our index here, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you, here's async, and async by default is get, okay, it's only get. So we're sending commands and receiving information via get, not via post. Ajax could use either, and here we're using post, and bind can use either, and there we're using post as well. Okay, so coming back to our app, um, when we route to async, we're going to receive the query. So it's quite easy to receive a query uh, when you're using get. It's built right into this thing called query. And that's an object that will hold all of the names of your properties that you sent. So if we look back here, we sent with async, we set a command equals initial data. You could also send ampersand uh, test equals one. So then on our query, we would have query.command and we would have query.test. Uh, so query, query.command, the thing in front of the equal sign, and query.test right there. Test would be one and command would be initial data. Anyway, I've only sent one thing. Uh, so if we come back over here, uh, there's us asking for the requests query. So this is the stuff coming in and on the query object, property, whatever, we have a command. So if there is a command, then command is equal to that command. This is the ternary operator. It's like a, con a quick conditional. Else, so if this is true, then we have a command. Else, we're going to just put empty. All right, and then here we are sending back the async. So this is how Zim async works. You put a string that has async dot whatever your callback function is. So back over here, async, and our callback is called start right there. 
So on the app side, we go async start, and then we put whatever data we want. So an answer is async to and from server, and then we're using the templating, the new templating in ES6 to insert the command. So there's the command that we received, and we're putting it right there in the string. You could have uh, used concatenation with the dot in there. But remember that to use the command, we are in back ticks here. So it's quite common, uh, people using Node like using the back ticks and inserting data there. They, you know, they feel like, uh, hey, I'm using new, new JavaScript. And I guess it's a little bit shorter, so it's good to get used to anyway. But that's the templating. We're inserting this variable into this string and sending it back. Note that the string is an object literal there. Okay, so when that comes back to Zim, we just get the data right here, and we've asked for the data.answer. And that object literal will, will be passed through as JSON because async uses JSON P. And so that's JSON in there, and it gets automatically decoded as well. So it's, it's encoded and decoded just fine, and we can just get our data.answer. Isn't that nice? All right. And that's why this says initial data right there. If we didn't get it, how can we test? If there was no command, so if I go command three here and save, and then do a refresh here, it says empty. Okay, isn't that neat? So my async is empty because the app here uh, did not receive a command. Instead, it received, what was it again? A command three. So if I save this and note that as I'm saving and stuff and refreshing, um, I think I should be getting, well, I didn't see that update here. Uh, did I save it? I did. Save. I think that should start again. Let me refresh here and see. Yep, it did. Okay, so Nodemon is handling all that well. And coming down to the next part then, that was async. And here's our Ajax. So we, oh, we're back over here. That was async. And here's our Ajax down here. When we're using post, we don't get it on the query like this. We don't have our request.query. That's only with post. Instead, it comes in in the body itself, and that's rather awkward. Um, so what we do is we tell the app, so this, is, uh, this comes with Express. We tell Express to URL encode it, to call URL encoded, and don't worry about that, just, just we do it. And what that does is it goes through and it looks for any variables that are stored in the body of the, the text that's um, being sent to it. And it takes those variables and it stores it on a body property, uh, which is actually the body. So in the body, it's all there as strings, basically. And this thing encodes that and adds them to the body as variables. So if we pass in a variable called data, it will be added to the body as opposed to, to a query. Otherwise, it's very similar. So here's us getting the command on query. If we had sent a command, we would get the command on the body. But we sent data. So let's see that. Back in our button, right here, when we tapped it, we made new Ajax, and we sent data is hello from button. We could send other things as well. We're also sending a URL. So the data is hello from button. And back over here, we're going to receive that data on the body because we've added that. You only need to do that once and then you can collect as many things as you want from post just with that. Uh, okay, so once we get it, um, once we get it, this is being via post here. So Ajax is uh, the routing on post. Once we receive it, we're console.logging it, but we're also going to send back to um, so result.send server says and whatever was in that request.body that's why this thing burp, says server says hello from button because that's what was in the data that we sent here 
So here's the callback, dupe button. Here's the data that we're receiving from the, um, from the app. And there's us putting that data into a label and sticking it right there. Very nice. Okay, here's Ajax back and forth. Now we're going to check out the binding. So this is the bind and it's routed here. Doot, 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 right there. When we created our bind, it says go to the server called bind via post. And on the server, we have the app.post and there's our bind routing. Um, we're receiving the command on the body again, because this is post and remember once, once we have this, it works for here and it works for here. So on the body, we get a command and we get data because back on the index, oh, you don't know about this, but bind basically sends a command and that will be either from or to or whatever else we've got a to from or a from to, I can't remember which one that works. Okay, so we've got three different, maybe four different types of commands. And so we'll receive those automatically. And then we also have this being the data here, like whether it's checked, oops, whether C1, C2, C3, C4 is checked. And so we come back here. So that would be, I guess, under the data. And we're gonna see how we deal with that down below. Okay, we could use, so here's that little note talking about a database. We're gonna use a flat file instead, a very similar thing, but um, we could use a database such as MySQL and there's other drivers like Mongo. So that would look like something like this. You would take this right up here. And well, we don't have to go up here, but by convention we, we do. And go like that. Const MySQL, require MySQL. We have not imported MySQL though um, in the package, so you'd have to go out and I don't know what it is, npm install or i uh, mysql. Okay, something like that and hit enter and that would install MySQL so that you could import it. Uh, you can go out on NPM, Node Package Manager, and just do a quick search. There's probably different types of them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Although there is a main MySQL one that probably everybody uses. And where do we get to? Async post Ajax bind. Okay. All right. Um, and then you can access any MySQL commands such as select, insert, uh, delete, um, in, uh, whatever. Uh, is that all? <laughs> anyway, stuff like that, okay, to get your data to go in and out of the database, basically. Uh, here is a flat file system. So we're specifying a file, checkbox.txt, right there. And that's what's in checkbox.txt. It's actually some JSON, it looks like, uh, with these brackets. There's the data for one. You don't have to do any of this. It will write that for you. This is the format the ZimBind uses. Okay, so with ZimBind, you can do things separately or you can do things all as one single JSON. So uh, you could have a database that just has one record or two records, probably an ID and uh, a JSON um, string here. Isn't that neat? Or you could divide this up and have a database with store C1, store C2, store like different uh, fields in your record. All right, but yeah, that works either way. Okay, uh, coming back though to bind, Boop. that's in here. We are logging to the console, the command and the data. So as we do a check here, I just did that. It uh, The command is two. So I, I, I went over here and I went like that one of these things. The command is two, C1 is true, C2 is true, C3 is false. True, true, false, and C4 is true. Okay, so we're getting the right data. There, um, if the command is from, that's the very first time, so we're supposed to be sending from here to Zim, then we're going to read the file and if we have a problem reading the file, then we're going to console.log, sorry, and we'd see that here. Uh, and we're gonna send back the data that's in the file. So we basically just send back that string. And that's the string that ZimBind is expecting to get that data. ZimBind 
bound C1, C2, C3, C4 to the checked and uh, basically um, if this is the very first time we wouldn't receive anything here and we'd be fine, it'd just be unchecked. But um, when we send data to, so when we send data to, we're writing this stuff. This is the data that we got and Zimbind sent that data because that's the format that it was expecting. And then we're writing that to our file. If there's an error, then it's going to log here. We could send back an, an error or two in a different way, but we didn't bother because this always works anyway. And so all we're doing is sending back success. So when we check this, we send back success. I don't know if we didn't even log anything in the console, but we could have. I'm going to see what that would look like. So back in our index, there's our bind from to, uh, we would have to do that in here. We'd have to have put a callback inside of the twos and that callback could receive the fact that it was successful. Um, so the callback's not the first parameter, it's some other parameter. You would look in the database, or sorry, in Zim. So here's code, I'll see, we'll go to the top here and under docs and type in bind. Uh, okay, and bind has a method called two, and so you come down to the methods properties, whoops, methods, to unique, to, from, remove, add. So add, remove, from, and to, there's the targets, the props, the extra, the filter, the smart decimals, and the finally the callback. Um, so, uh, but it accepts in duo, so you'd probably be operating um, sim duo with just call. So in other words, that would be in here, um, squiggly brackets, call colon arrow function, which would receive some data, uh, zog d. Okay, so we save that up and refresh here and hopefully that works. Um, that's if we check this one, success. Check this one, success. If we check some other ones, we didn't put the callback on those other ones. So we didn't receive it, but checking here, success. And all we're doing is passing success, whether it's checked or not. So uh, back in the app, we're just sending success, no matter what the data is. So anyway, that's fine. We, we received some success. So that's pretty wicked. And I'm sorry if all this seems like magic. Sometimes as you look at stuff for the first time, it's like, oh my God, how would I have ever known that? I would never have known to put that in there. Uh, well, we have docs for that and I'm telling you now, <laughs> there we go. And I think you'll see that all of this, much like the rest of Zim, is very, very uh, concise, all right? Especially, especially on the Zim side you just can't get more concise than what we're doing here. And that's good, it's a good thing. All right, so even working in data, we have a whole um, Zim school on data. Let me just show you that quickly here. So um, Zim school, mm, probably in the learn module. Well, um, there are lessons, so there's code pen lessons, there's kids, there's in school. Another way to, to reach school, so that's in school, is to, in the footer of any of the pages, there's Zim school. And then it's the last lesson down here called data, lesson on data. That is really good. If you don't know about data, or even if you do know about data, you might want to take a look at why we're using data on the canvas to be able to save things like collages that we make, uh, configurators, etc. cetera. Um, there's resources for creative coding lessons. So all of the creative coding lessons has about um, uh, nine videos. So at, at the top of any of these, this is reference, but at the top there's videos in each of these. There should be, where's the video on here? Beep, beep. do you see it? Bind base reference out here there. Okay, creative coding video 34, client and server talking about database stuff. So you press on this and here's the creative coding video. It's got all its little chapters uh, laid out here as well. 
Okay, so all of this is like a textbook with videos that are talking about async and bind and base. Base works with PHP, but uh, async and bind might interest you there. But if uh, you've never really done vid data before, you should have a, a read through some of the early parts, the difference between data and information, the different parts of data, um, how it all ties in with hierarchies and organizations, and what we're doing. You see the isomorphisms of hierarchy that we're seeing here. Okay, and all of this stuff is pretty fantastic. This is all first principle thinking. So it might be a little different than what you've seen before. And yet, hopefully it's easy enough for you as well. Okay, uh, I am Dr. Abstract, and we were taking a look at how to do examples there on a Node.js server. Is there anything else that we need to talk about? We saw how to do Nodemon or Nodemon. Isn't that funny? I think it's Nodemon for Node Monitor, but it could be Nodemon, so the, but I think it's Nodemon. And that will automatically save and restart your app. Otherwise, that whole last bit where we were making changes would have been really onerous. We'd have to control C and start over again. Um, we saw a little bit on how to install that package. So remember, we started with npm install to bring in all the Node stuff. Then we ran the app, Node app, or uh, npm start. npm start or node app. Either of those will run the app. We looked at it here on localhost 3000 and we saw how we were getting data back and forth in these three manners with your node app that you're making if you are using a backend of node.js to handle your data, your database access, any of the packages like getting jokes. It would actually be good to do a follow-up, not a bubbling, but maybe an explore on how to put a joke in Zim like this. So I could hit get joke like that and a joke would show up. Wouldn't that be cool? So look for that. I'm Dr. Abstract here at uh, what's bubbling a Zim. So we put together that package specifically for this Zim 017 launch. And uh, we, this is, I think, there, there might be one more video coming up on the Zim 017, what's new. We're patching that in soon. So have a look for that. And of course, uh, check out the channel, um, subscribe, etc., And to find us at zimjs.com slash discord and forum.zimjs.com or zimjs.com slash forum. And if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.